Schaefer for SOS Medical Transport in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. He first joined Toastmasters as a Gavel Club member in 1975, then became an active member in 1977. For 31 years, he was incarcerated in the Missouri Department of Corrections, where all but six months of that time, he was an active member of Toastmasters. First, he was in the Alpha Toastmasters and then in Jefferson City, and then he was in Tulu Toastmasters in Mobile, Missouri. Tonight, he will share how Toastmasters provides confidence, leadership skills, and it can even help save lives. He will also share the importance of the Robert Drummond Inmate Scholarship Fund, which District 8 uses to support our prison clubs and when our later on trivia contest will be help supporting. Please help me give a warm welcome to Tony as he will be presenting the investment, not a penny wasted. Thank you, Karen. District, division and area officials, fellow Toastmasters, my club, High Noon Toastmasters, 70, uh, 7220, and every Toastmaster that is out there listening to my voice. I wanna share something with you. This conversation we're having is not about money. It is not about money. It's about an investment. An investment in the lives of individuals that you wouldn't believe have overcome great obstacles simply because they were members of Toastmasters. Tonight, I'm gonna to share with you about some individuals that were once incarcerated, now free, and have went on to have careers you wouldn't believe. And I wanna start with one person in particular. His name is Andrew. Andrew, was an individual that came from the inner city of St. Louis, was in every gang you could think of, was as diabolical of an individual that you could possibly run into, came to prison with an attitude that nothing was worth him changing his life over. He was there, so he was just gonna do his own thing. But somehow, we were able to get him into Toastmasters. We hoped he'd go to church. We'd hoped that he would spend time, quality time, writing to his children and his family. But we got him in Toastmasters. And I can give you a long story of, of the struggle, the achievements, the accomplishments, but I wanna take you to right now. Andrew is one of the top executives in the St. Louis area. He is featured on Indeed as one of the up and coming facilitators that invest back into the community in which he came from. And he's a part of the Fatherhood Initiative Program in the city of St. Louis. Andrew has traveled throughout this country since his release, telling his story and being able to get other individuals to accept the fact that you may have a reason for living a diabolical or destructive life, but it's not an excuse. And Andrew is a solid proof that Toastmasters, and he can give his own testimony, made such a difference in his life. And it was the small things. It wasn't the fact that he was moving up the ranks and became an ATM, and back then the bronze, go, uh, silver, and gold, or the DTM. It was the opportunity for him to dig down in himself and bring out talents that he, he didn't even know he had. Rodney Lincoln, I, I think all of you might have met Rodney at some point or the other. An individual that spent better than 35 years in the Missouri Department of Correction for a crime he didn't commit. Rodney could have been bitter. Rodney could have gave up. Rodney could have just did anything uh, that could have been destructive throughout the institution or with individuals because he was wrongly accused. But Rodney, became a Toastmaster. And doing his tender and Toastmaster, Rodney did some phenomenal things. But one of the most personal things he ever did, he became my brother. And Rodney and I created a program called Alpha Focus. And if you ever get an opportunity to go into the Jeff City Correctional Center, 
I think they still put Alpha Focus on once a year. Many years ago, TI had asked that we would do Donahue. And this was a program that was designed to have a panel and subject topics with an audience that was asked the question and mimic the TV show. Right, and I was able to get men to come in and share their stories and talk about situations in their lives, their crafts, their, their lows, their ups, their, their loneliness. And, and so many people were able to release things. So when I say this isn't about money, I mean that simply because when you can invest in something that you can stand back and smile about, wish you'd have gave more to, wish you could see more of the outcome, this tonight in the trivia contest or just in your own heart that you want to give is going to be so worth it. I spent 31 years in the Department of Correction, not proud of one minute. And I did not like one thing there. There's not one meal, uh, one TV show, no, no nothing in the Department of Corrections that I want to go back to. So I was so happy that I was able to participate in Toastmasters. And, and I, you know, I was humbled there because I had been in Toastmasters on the outside. So I went in like I knew something. And I learned very quickly uh, why our founder, uh, a doc, Dr. Ralph Smedley, when he said, anybody that think they're greater than someone else will fully be checked, put in a place and made to understand that we're all equal and we all have value. So, you know, I kind of went into Alpha thinking I was a big guy, you know, I know this program and these convicts are gonna be coming up behind me. Well, I went into a club that was so solid that the only thing I could do to make sense was to shut up learn, participate, and then grow from there. But what we found in the programs that we were able to put on there was that we didn't know some talents. We didn't know some growth that we could gain from this. We just thought it was a, a nice program to be a part of. It was internationally uh, renowned, so hey, look, we're here. We're going to be a part of this international program. But, you know, something happened along the way. Now, I know that tonight's uh, honorary, uh, honorary people that we're uh, recognizing is Dory Drummond and Omar Roberts, who I got to meet and got uh, very close to. But there were many Toastmasters that would come into those institutions with us and guide us in such a way that it was impossible to fail. Laura May Stewart and H. Max Stewart, they were the really pioneers behind Alpha getting started and really the prison Toastmaster experience in our country to really start. H. Max Stewart was a man that was a solid leader. And after he passed on, Laura May stayed with us at the program. Vanita Tricky came into the program. Brenda John Meyer came into the program. Cindy Lawn. Uh, Floyd Westermeyer, of course, Omar and Dory would come. And so many would come in, uh, Dottie Carson, Dave Craig, all these Toastmasters and so many more would come in and would share this experience with us. And we learned something from this that my ATM was just as important as their ATM. That any growth, any development I got from Toastmasters was just as important as anyone from the outside. And this organization allowed us to feel equal, so equal to every other Toastmaster that we come in contact with. But how would you like to be a part of something that would turn a person's life around? Like Daryl Luckett. Daryl went into prison for murder. And then he murdered himself every day thereafter. He didn't think he had any worth, any value. Family, you know, they were all going to leave him. Got into Toastmasters. And all of a sudden, he was able to express himself. And once he learned that this just wasn't no public speaking group, but effective communication and leadership, he was able 
to resume his position in his family, especially with his children, and he established himself. And he and two others, were both Toastmasters as well, got out and they formed a trucking company. And they have a fleet of possibly 15 vehicles. This is because people invested in Toastmasters and the penal system. Now, if we could talk about something that's really personal to me, it is the opportunity to be able to share beyond the prison club. Most of the men in those clubs are going to walk out. But then there's some that's never going to leave. And you would wonder, well, why do they want this? They want it because they want to be a better them. And when I came home, I wanted to have better opportunities. But my big, biggest gift was being able to help someone else recognize better opportunities. So from my experience in Toastmasters, I'm now on the verge of creating a foundation called Build a Better You for You. And this allows me to work with people that are displaced, homeless, reentering society, and individuals that just don't know how to recognize success, hope, and opportunity. If you get involved in behind this, there are hundreds of men and women that can be a part of this organization. So I, I try to be clever and come up with something. Okay, so here we go. If you buy you a Big Mac, a large order of fries, an apple pie, and a large soda, it'll probably cost you 13 to 17 bucks. And you'll get that fulfillment for a few hours, and then you wish you hadn't ate it. But if you take that same 17 bucks, and all of you that could hear my voice would invest it toward an individual that just needs one opportunity, that fulfillment of that meal will last a lifetime and will have an effect that you wouldn't believe. So I don't want to just go over everything over and over again. So I'm just going to tell you, old Tony, <laughs> 65 years old now, still got the moves. And I'm able to really be me because Toastmasters invested in me. When they sent me my certifications, they didn't say to Lou in the prison Toastmaster, DTM, ATM, or whatever or Alpha, or the other organizations that were once Toastmasters group within the system, they said, Tony Davis. And I was able to stand up, be firm, and know that I was just as important as anyone else that was receiving that sort of certification nowhere, no matter where it was in the world. So I know we're gonna have a little question and answer, I'm really good with that. But I want to share something with you with the porn that I read. And I have to get my glasses because I can't see without them. And it's called The Cold Within. It talked about six human beings that had all got lost in the forest. And they finally come together. And they needed to make a fire to survive. So one would look across there and see someone of another race and said he wasn't going to use his match in order to start a fire to warm them people. Another looked across and saw somebody very wealthy and said, I'm not going to take my stick to give something to warm up that person that's selfish. And so many went on with the different items and clothing that they had that they wouldn't share. So they all sit there looking at each other, not willing to make a move for the other to contribute to this fire. Well, they were found the next day. And when they found them, they realized that something was very odd about these people who had died. So they took him into the corner. And the corner made out his report. And he said, there was no real reason for them to not survive the night. They had everything that they needed. So the reason they died in that cold wasn't from the cold without, it was from the cold within. 
not willing to give, not willing to share, not willing to see value in the next person. And I know as Toastmasters and as individuals that take part in something that constantly uplifts and builds other individuals, this is not just a challenge. This is a golden opportunity. This is an investment that can't fail. So Karen, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, it meant a lot to me to know that I can say one little thing maybe that will help the individuals that are still within the system that all they need is this same opportunity that I received. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Yeah, a great speech. I was wondering, does anybody, if anybody had a question they would like to ask about the prison clubs or even about the Dory Drummond um, inmate scholarship, uh, if you would raise your hand or you could type it in the chat. I, I have a question. Uh, yeah. Larry Ketchum, Toastmasters Club, Scott Air Force Base. Hey, Tony, uh, appreciate you sharing and being transparent in your, your journey. Uh, my question to you is the resiliency piece of doing 31 years for something you did not commit. You know, I'm more curious as to how it is you remain to stay so positive and be so calm after serving 31 years of life that you can never, ever get back. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think what happened was my mother and I had a falling out when I, uh, I kept arguing with her about what I didn't do. So she asked me what I did do. And so I, I said, okay, I did this, but I didn't do that. And she said, well, let me tell you something. I don't want to hear you crying no more because if you hadn't have done that, you never would have had this other come to you. So get over it. And when you do call me and she slammed the phone down, and for six months, she wouldn't take a call. And it was so funny because I would call her and the operator would ask, would anybody accept the click off from Tony? And she said, no, tell him to write. And so that made the operator laugh. And I guess it made me start thinking about what did I want? And so I stayed positive because I didn't think they were going to let me go. And I was so determined to make sure that other individuals who were going home weren't coming back. So I think what happened is I started caring about other folks and I started caring about what someone else might be able to achieve and not cry about, as my mother said, the door I open. Cause she said, when you dabble in dirt long enough, uh, you'll look like you waddled in it. So I think what happened is I just started caring for other people and, and it just helped me. Maggie, do you have a question you'd like to ask? Yes, ma'am, I do. Tony, I loved your speech. If I heard you correctly, I believe you stated that you were in Toastmasters when you went in and you felt like you were experienced and all these convicts were going to be behind you. How was your experience different on the outside with Toastmasters versus on the inside with Toastmasters? Well, on the outside, it was more of a social group. You know, it was going there and uh, we had an hour or maybe an hour and a half to go. So it was sort of uh, not as intense as it was in there. Uh, we had something to prove in there. So uh, I think the difference was uh, I went into Toastmasters, especially when we started at the Gallo Club level. Well, you know, and this was just a social. I was with peers and, and people that I'd worked with. And so I, I didn't really see the value of it until I got there and saw how hard people were willing to work, you know, to achieve it. And I don't know, maybe we had more shortcuts on the outside. I'm not really sure, but we, we didn't get away with it in there. All right. Um, Nate Randall had asked where may you donate and Evelyn Pierman put in the chat where our Give Butter campaign is being hosted. Um, there was a hand up, but was I think it was Diane. Diane, do you have a question? I just wanted to let you know that I am from the Boston area, from 
Boston, Massachusetts. And I actually have been involved with Prison Club in Toastmasters. I find it very rewarding to see so much growth from behind bars. And when they get out, they actually look for mentors and that we are able to help them still on the outside as well as when they were behind bars and they've made such a difference in them, the, themselves and in their own lives. And I can't say enough about the prison system. Yeah. And I am so thrilled that people have actually gone on to be more of a success for themselves after they've gotten out. Well, I want to thank you for saying that and for, vol <clears throat> for volunteering. Uh, but I also like said to Boston, you know, uh, we're from the St. Louis area, at least I am. And uh, we got y'all out of that slump for World Series too. <laughs> so, you know, uh, thank you for working with the prisons and out of appreciation, the Cardinals gave you guys your World Series championship. <laughs> awesome. Awesome speech, Tony. Congratulations and God bless. Thank you. You too. Karen Aneta asked, are women involved in the clubs? How can I get more information about your program? Uh, for the prison clubs? I would think that's what, he's, what she's talking about. Okay, well, uh, in order to go in to the uh, prisons, you have to go through a system uh, to become a volunteer in corrections. And each institution has what's called an IEC, Institution Activities Coordinator. And you just get with them and they try to place volunteers in the clubs. Unfortunately, in our state, uh, the two main clubs are Alpha and Toulouse that remain Toastmasters clubs. Most of the other institutions are kind of going with gavel clubs uh, simply because they can't afford uh, the do, uh, annual dues uh, for Toastmasters. But there are maybe another seven clubs throughout our system that need volunteers, although they are having uh, gavel club meetings, uh, but they can surely use the volunteers. And if this is successful, I mean, some of those clubs could charter and, and that would be awesome. Yeah, and Annetta, I think great, a good contact people for that would be Evelyn Pierman and Curtis Scroggins. And Tony, what was the name of the poem that you were reading? Uh, I didn't actually read it, I paraphrased, but it's called The Cold Within. And I, I want to shout out to Tulu. In 1994, 1995, Tulu was number one in the world. And it had nothing just to do, I was the president at the time, it wasn't just Tony. It was a group of 29 men that decided they wanted to go beyond. And it's not easy to, to have extra meetings because it was a different point system back then. And we really had to work, 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 work. Our district got behind us. Our area was small, but they got behind us. And when it was all said and done, Toulouse Toastmasters 9643, which is located at the Mobley Correctional Center, went number one in the world in our category. And I'm telling you, that's because people care. Well, Thank you, Tony. We are at seven o'clock. I just want to say that uh, the trio, uh, David Kincaid, Don Tucker, and I had the honor and privilege to visit Tulu last October. And you want to talk about one rocking Toastmaster club with enthusiasm and, and eager to learn and to better themselves. You were talking about Tulu. And while we're talking about them, a huge shout out to them because they have reached presidential distinguished status for this year. So, I mean, they're doing an awesome job and that has a lot to do with Evelyn and, and the other people and volunteers involved and just, just the pri that prison or that club getting all the support that they need from the facility to allow them to flourish. So Tony, thank you so much for joining us. I just wanna say right now we have uh, the Robert Drummond Inmate Scholarship Fund trivia has 1945 in it. 